Hello, everyone. Welcome to week five of the Hills Quilt Along. Congratulations. You've made it this far and hope you've had fun making. Many of you will be at very different stages. We've really enjoyed seeing what you've been posting on Facebook, our Poo Crew, and Let So with Latifa. We've seen some really cool stuff on Instagram, and it just jazzes us to see what you're making, and everyone has a different project. I mean, even if you're making a Hills quilt from the kit, yours is turning out different, slightly different, or maybe really different. So today in week five, we're gonna talk about taking those fans that we've created and all the different ways we can put together a layout. Because each block is the exact same size, you can put it anywhere, anywhere. So this is what's so fun about this point. The other thing I wanna talk about is I've made 39 fans with you guys as the weeks have gone by. And by the time maybe you're watching this video, maybe I'll have made another 10 fans, I don't know. But no matter where you are at with how many fans you've made, it's super important that you put them up on a design wall or down on the ground if you've got like maybe um, a white batting out so you have a white background and see what's going on and see how you like it. Um, many of you have made beautiful, beautiful fans with your own fabric stash. That's so fun to see. So curious for me to see, whoa, what are you thinking about? What are you making? And I love to see you guys starting to work with, well, how am I gonna put my fans together? Is it already all figured out? Or am I open to changing the layout and trying different things and saying, well, what if? What if I put this here or that there? So in this final week, I think what ends up revealing itself is if you haven't made all of your fans is where are the gaps? Where do you wanna fill in? Where do you wanna add drama? Where do you want to add quiet? Where do you want to blend better? Where do you want more contrast? So I'm gonna take down the quilt because this is obviously done and you guys have a map. If you bought my kit, you have the exact map for this. But I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna work with my new fans. So I'm gonna start by laying out my blue fans and then I'll probably work into my green and my yellow. Let's see what happens. Pin this up. We're not gonna do it exactly like I said, but let's just start laying out some fans. Okay, so I'm just gonna start in the middle. The very first block you put up, you want it to be fairly straight. You can eyeball it, but because it's all these curves, just stand in front of it and, you know, you wanna make sure it feels somewhat centered. Um, I don't measure exactly, but if it's really off, you're gonna start building your quilt at a strange angle. So, and I'm overlapping just to lay it out by about quarter inch, half an inch, because I know that's what my seam allowance is gonna be. And I don't really wanna see the white gaps. And I'm just gonna start looking at how my color is relating. And when I'm doing this layout, I have not put my registration marks. You know, Latifah's gonna teach you how to sew it all together. Um, right now, I am talking strictly about color, value, visual impact. I'm not talking about the um, registration marks and how you line it up and sew it, okay? We're still working with feel of quilt, the colors that we want to bring out. So again, I'm just putting things next to where I think they're pretty. This, this feels a little deeper, so I'm gonna put it towards the right. I like putting similar values next to one another. And um, let's go, let's just have fun and try, see what it feels like with the purple down here, purpley grays. Okay, and then maybe we go down here. And again, I have not planned this. I literally 
am just putting them up. There has been no pre-planning. I've just made these and I trust the process. So I trust whatever ends up happening. You know, I might need to fill in some gaps, but it's gonna look really pretty. You know, you, you don't wanna overthink this part. Just wanna get these, you wanna get these blocks up on the wall. And you just wanna get these blocks up on the wall. Oh, that's really pretty already. See how nice it is? with the dark ones down here. So I'm liking already how it's going from light to dark. I love this dark one being at the very bottom. It kind of weights it. And now I've run out of my blue blocks. Well, not all of them, but now I'm gonna, I've got a couple green blocks coming up. So I'm gonna just start adding some green. And these are all gonna end up moving around most likely. I just need to get them on the wall so I can see what I have. Now I've got the green blue ones, which is perfect to put in right around here. You know, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. And again, don't worry about things meeting right now because it's everything's a curve. Um, this is a fun kind of yellowy. I'm gonna stick this right down here. Okay, here's another kind of greenish blue. That's kind of pretty right in here, like that. And here I'm going to start introducing the little color color sparks here. Try this. These are the ones with the color bars. Here I'm introducing. Here I'm introducing a few of the ones with the color bars. And I do know that I've got eight fans up you know, on each row. So I haven't dealt with the very bottom row or the very top or the sides yet. So that is, will, is coming. I have five more left that are in the yellows. Before I continue, I'm gonna take a break and step back and take a look. So as a new layout, I like how the yellow and the warms are pushing this way and the blues are pushing this way and the greens are this way. So getting diagonals intersecting into each other's atmospheres is fun and it's, a natural way for this pattern to go because of the shape of the fan. So what's sticking out to me right now, and again, I, I'm right on top of this and I have not done any planning. Like this is real time with me playing. But what is sticking out for me is I have a nice strong value depth and then this is light. So this feels a little out of place to me. I don't know if it feels out of place to you, but I wanna have this be a heavier more uh, a deeper value so i'm going to take this guy out and i think i'm going to replace it with this one and let's see what happens when we put this in here and i think i like it better already see how that grounds it and it brings it connects this piece so it's not sticking alone in there it brings it out into here and and this top one, I think this top one appears too dark up here. So I really like how this has changed, but I don't like this straight line of blue, yellow. So I either need to make this yellow or bring the blue deeper in, into this way, which I don't think I want to do that. I really like what the yellow is doing. So I'm actually going to maybe take this guy out here.
So I've been working on the layout and I've shifted it since the last um, time we talked. And I have done a layout that is the exact same colors that you're getting in your kit. It's everything. I made all of my, um, well, almost all of my blocks and I've arranged them differently in the final arrangement again than what, what you're seeing in your kit. But just know that you can just play and that every quilt's gonna be different. This is really not a copycat quilt, even though we did give you a key. It's more like a copycat idea and that you're to have fun with all the ombres. Um, if you look to my edges, cause this is the important part now. So after I started evaluating how many blocks I've gotten done, what fabrics are left over that I haven't cut, and then what gaps. So as you see here, I've got to build one, two, three, four, five, six, six more blocks to create the bottom. And I know that this is going to be a half block. So the bottom half of the block is light and the top half is darker. Same thing with here. I've got some lighter, um, some lighter color, although it's not really light. That's actually a dark one. Sorry, over here. Over here, the bottom is light. I've got the, this kind of creamy color, this soft green. It's actually the backside of that green. And then this light part of spa. And I do that because the it's going to get cut at the bottom. The very bottom, you're having F59 and F58 are cut in half. And the other half of those are going up top. F3 and F5. Now, clearly I have not made the same blocks. So the point is, usually I have light on the bottom and whatever color is in this area on the top. And this will make sense to you when you get around to filling in all the bits. And we're gonna kind of take the camera around the bits. So here, I haven't cut this one in half yet because I'm not 100% sure I wanna have this block on the edge cut in half, but this one I've cut in half, this one, this one I've cut in half, here I'm gonna make an extra, and I work my way up so that it's still not 100% complete, but you get the process, which is the most important part, and that's really what I'm trying to teach, is that you become comfortable with a process and that you trust the process, and that in the end, you're gonna get your own quilt, which is really, really great. Uh, the other side here, so when I cut a block in half, I definitely want to use it again. I don't want to not use it. So I'm putting them in the, into the gaps in here. And this blue half, that might end up just being a quarter. You know, this will get halved. And then I might just be putting a quarter in piece, this quarter piece down at the bottom left. We'll see, we'll see. But in the end, if you're not doing this to the T, which, you know, many of you aren't, and um, I encourage you to kind of break out a little bit, that it's the very final steps that you just have to play with. Walk out of the room, walk in, give yourself some days. It's not a race. And um, I hope this helps with layout. And that's exactly why I've done a different layout, to show you that there's lots and lots and lots of options.